Hey guys. First off, I want to say, well, I've been prompted to make this video about the things that keep coming to my mind. I don't know if it's the Holy Spirit or just the things that I just can't stop thinking about. In the past, I've said no. I'm not doing a video. But this will not stop, so I know that I have to make this video. I hesitate to even make a video because in the past some of my videos have been savagely attacked by some people on the YouTube community. So I deleted a couple of videos because of it. But this is not about me and I'm to the point where I don't care what anyone thinks or says. I've seen the same things happen to other watchmen. So I just need to say this. I'm using notes, so I'm going to be looking down. In some of my past videos, I talked about the Israeli elections. I'm going to start today with that. I want to talk about an article in the Jerusalem Post from September 24th, 2019. Um, it's about Rabbi... Yitzhak Kadiri and his prophecies in a book he wrote in 1979 um, reportedly about Rabbi Sasan Shoshani who Kadori said was known as the prophet of Egypt and it goes on to say that Shoshani said there will come a day that two ministers will win the government in the land of Israel both of their names will be Benjamin and neither of them will succeed <clears throat> in establishing their government or kingship. On that day, <clears throat> know and understand that King Messiah already stands at the door. And on the Sabbath, afterwards, he will come and be revealed. Shoshani's statement continues. Understand and remember this. On the eve of 5780, which began on September 30th, 2019, and ends this September 18th, will be the year of correction. There will not be a government in Israel for an extended period of time, and various camps will quarrel much without decision on either side. And then, on Rosh Hashanah, the Jewish New Year itself, there will be a fight in heaven the holy side against the evil side, and God and his entourage will decide between them. And this is all I can say. From here, I swore not to reveal more secrets and hidden things. It's kind of weird. Like, we think of New Year's Eve would have been last September 30th. But the way this is written, it looks like it's going to be a war in heaven this September. So after the first and second elections, um, neither of the Benjamins succeeded in establishing their government. But on the third election, both Benjamins were declared winners and declared victory, and both considered winners. I believe that the third election, the prophecy was fulfilled that Kadori spoke about. Both Benjamins were considered winners, but now due to issues agreeing on the budget to run the government, they may be headed to a fourth election and had not total, they, they don't have a totally functioning government. The deadline for completing the process of the budget into law is August 25th, which is tomorrow. 100 days after the formation of the government, if neither a budget nor a bill is to extend the deadline is passed, then the, there'll be another election in November, which could initiate it automatically. And that'll be Israel's fourth election in 19 months. In Micah 4, 
verse 9, it says, Now thou cry out loud, Is there no king in thee? Is thy counselor perished? For the pangs have taken thee like a woman in travail. And don't we consider this time prior to the rapture of the church as a woman in labor? In an article published yesterday, August 23rd, 2020, in Breaking Israel News, Rabbi Shalom Arush said, I'm going to tell you with certainty that God will help us meet after this coming Rosh Hashanah. Rabbi Arush said in an interview last week, and remember well what I'm telling you, that this Rosh Hashanah will be the last one without Messiah. And it could be very well be that on this Rosh Hashanah, the Messiah will be revealed. So we all know that their Messiah is not Jesus. And it's going to be ushering in probably the Antichrist. I can't say that it's going to happen right on Rosh Hashanah, but it looks like something's going to happen. So in Matthew 24, Jesus talks about the fig tree generation, and we all know that the fig tree is Israel. And even if you disregard Psalm 90, verse 10, that a generation is 70 years, and if by strength, 80, the average lifespan of a generation for people in the U.S. is 78.7 years, and the United Nations estimate a global average life expectancy of 72.6 years for 2019. The generation that saw Israel born is now 72, this prophecy about Jesus' second coming and at the end of the tribulation. So add seven years to 72 and we're at 79. When we look at Noah and Lot in the Bible, it is clear that God does not do anything without giving notice that something's going to happen. In Matthew 24, 37 through 39, for like the days of Noah, so is the coming of the Son of Man will be. For in those days before the flood, people were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and took them away. It will be the same as the, as the coming of man. So the lesson of the fig tree, as soon as the branches are tender and it puts out its leaves, we'll know summer is near. So also you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not. Isaiah 66 verse 8, who has heard such a thing, has seen such a thing, such a thing? Shall a land be born in a day? Shall a nation be brought forth in a moment? For as soon as Zion was in labor, she brought forth, forth her children. In Daniel 9.24, it's prophesied that 490 years of punishment against the Jewish people, the ones that do not believe in Jesus, the non-believers, those that rebel against God, 483 years of this prophecy have been completed. God is reversing, the la reserving the last seven years for the punishment of the Jewish people. And it's also for them to realize that Jesus is their Messiah. The Jews refuse to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, but God is going to show them that he is their Messiah. This time is also for the punishment of the Israelites' enemies. The tribulation is not about the believers in Jesus. 
It's about the salvation of the Jewish nation. That is what the last seven years of the 490 years is all about. That's seven times 70. And if you want to read Isaiah, you could, I think you should read this. So many of us thought that since the Holy Spirit came down during Pentecost, um, the church would go up the same day. So we were all looking this past Pentecost, and that didn't happen. So I'm going to say that since Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, and Pentecost have been fulfilled, we look to the fall feast. During the feast days, we have an eclipse, Revelation 12 sign, and I'm going to go over that stuff and the timing of these things quickly. The Great American Eclipse. Um, I was watching a video called From God's Roadmap to the End, and um, that's when that came to mind. I just couldn't believe what I was watching. And in that video, he was talking about how three years prior to Jonah arriving in Nineveh, they had a, sol a total solar eclipse. And they knew it was a sign from God. So when Jonah arrived three years after, he said, yet 40 days and Nineveh will be overthrown. They had 40 days till something was going to happen. So if we add three years we get August 21st, 2020, and 40 days brings us to September 30th, 2020. Is that a sign from God? Is he giving us warning? The solar eclipse, just like Nineveh? The thing that just, I can't stop thinking about is that all of these signs are coming in the fall and not during the harvest of wheat and stuff like that and first fruits. So it, everything is, is pointing towards a fall rapture. The September 23rd, 2017 Revelation 12 sign puts, that's right in the middle of the fall feasts. And it was a huge sign from God. And it appears that the Revelation 12 sign, which has never happened in reported history, may be a three-year warning of the rapture. I'm not saying it's on that day. I'm just saying we have to look at the fall feasts to uh, get an idea of when this is going to happen. So, for those of you who don't know what the Revelation 12 sign is, and what it says in Revelation 12, it says, And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, and a woman clothed in the sun, with the moon at her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. And she, being with child, cried in travail, in birth, and pain, and delivered. And like I said before, this has never been happening been recorded in history. If you go on Solarium or one of those programs, you can go through every day and see that it has never happened. So if we move on to the second total solar eclipse, which is going to happen on April 8th, 2024, over the United States and Mexico, that's the one that makes the other side of the X um, of the Great American Eclipse. I took that date and I subtracted 1260 days, so that'd be three and a half years. And that date is Monday, October 26th, 2020. Could this be the midpoint of the tribulation? Starting this fall? I don't know, maybe. Then we have the third total solar eclipse. And that is over 
eastern, the eastern, central eastern hemisphere, which includes Israel. On Monday, August 2nd, 2027. So if you take August 2nd, 2027 and go backwards to April 8th, 2024, the total solar eclipse, you get 1,211 days. In Amos 8, verse 9, and it says, And it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord God, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon, and I will darken the earth in the clear day. So it gives us 200, 1,211 days. And if you read in Matthew 24, verse 22, and if those days had not been cut short, no human being would be saved. For the, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be cut short. So he's shaving off a bunch of days, like about almost two months. Um, in Mark, it says, if the Lord had not cut short those days, no human being would be saved. But for the sake of elect, whom he chooses, he shortened the days. So this year, on Rosh Hashanah, it's September 18th through the 20th. So the eve of September 18th through the eve of September 20th. 2020 and Kadori's prophecy says that there's going to be a war in heaven it says on the eve and we think of the eve as the beginning maybe they're talking about the end because it sure lines up with what's going on and Yom Kippur the day of atonement is September 27th through the 28th, 2020. And then Sukkot, Feast of Tabernacles, is Friday, October 2nd through the 9th, 2020. As we approach the upcoming weeks leading to all the dates, we'll see a dramatic increase in destruction, possible volcanic eruptions. The pandemic that we're going through, they're talking about another lockdown I'm not gonna get into politics, but apparently there's a couple of medications that you can take. They don't wanna hear that. The civil unrest, the riots, everything that's going on in our world, it's coming to a crescendo. And I think that it's going to we're gonna see some stuff happening September, October. And I truly believe that the rapture is gonna happen before the Israeli elections and the elections here in the United States. Lastly, before I go, I just wanna, I wanna um, tell you about my dreams. And, and I'm a person who rarely has dreams. I just don't dream. And if I do dream, it's usually torture because I've had two wives die and my dreams are normally about them, that they're alive, but they won't talk to me and they won't acknowledge my presence. So I don't know what all that's about. But in the last couple of weeks, I have these dreams, like crazy dreams. Um, like, like, it's almost like a volcano went off and rocks and stuff are falling from the sky. I, it could be bombs. I don't know. I don't know. But I know that people are running around crazy trying to get away from it. And they're just all this debris falling from the sky. And it's not like there's big explosions. It's just like impact stuff. So I, I don't know what's going on. And I don't know why I'm having these dreams, but um, there's a lot of violence and 
um, people stealing, carjacking, and trying to take whatever they can to escape from all this stuff happening. So, I don't know. Now they're, I just read something in Breaking Israel News that there's supposed to be an asteroid strike right around the, our elections. So, we'll see what happens with that. I don't know. So, if you don't know Jesus as your Savior, if you don't believe in him and you want to, I would suggest you read Romans 10, 9 through 13. There's a lot of other um, scripture that I can post in the box below. I'll put J.D. Farag's ABCs of Salvation in the box below also. And know that I'll be praying for you all. And I do believe that we will see each other in the clouds along with our loved ones who have passed before us very soon. Thank you.